The Pace Prima is an analogue satellite receiver which used to be quite popular with viewers of Sky TV and as such they are quite easy to pick up second hand, either from eBay or at car boot sales etc. The Prima can be pressed into use as an amateur television receiver for analogue signals on 23cm or 10GHz for example if used with a suitable LNB. The Pace Prima, like most other analogue satellite receivers, suffers from one major problem though. Namely, unless the signal is reasonably strong or clear, then you get a blue screen instead of video to your TV. This is not such a problem if you're using it to receive a strong station on a known frequency and heading, but it is a problem if you are trying to catch a weak station where maybe the beam heading is not known exactly or maybe if you are operating 10 GHz and you want to take advantage of the reflections from nearby objects. It may also be that you are setting up on 10 GHz for the first time and don't know exactly what frequency your LMB is on. Ideally we want the receiver to show the video signal all of the time, whether it is receiving a good signal or not, so that we can see even the slightest hints of the picture as we adjust our antenna heading or receiver frequency. These slight hints may be as subtle as seeing a noise start to be crossed with sync pulses. Visually this is like having an S meter for peaking the signal. So we know what we'd like. Can the paste box be modified to do this? There is no schematic that I could find, but the data sheets for all but one of the important parts are available. We can find out about the tuner, which contains of course the tuner, which converts to baseband, and the audio subcarrier demodulators, which I don't think are used in the pace box, but I could be wrong on that. The baseband video, which is what we are interested in, is fed to a separate video audio processor chip, the SGS Thompson STV0056A, where the signal is boosted and routed, for example to the decryption hardware, which we're not interested in. From here it goes to the on-screen display chip that is responsible for the text we see when tuning and of course the blue screen. At first glance it seems that we need to focus on this chip, but after probing around it seems that the blue screen is turned on and off by a Zilog microprocessor which it turns out was produced for PACE and of course there is no av available information on this device. The blue screen is turned on and off via I2C commands so we can't simply fool it. There are two simple alternatives I came up with. The simplest is to capture the baseband signal where it leaves the STV0056A pro video processor and route this to the outside world. The second option is to inject valid sync pulses at a low level into the STV0056A just strong enough that the Zilog controller thinks it has video to lock and hence no blue screen. The first option works well as can be seen here but the downside is that you cannot see any on screen display on the TV screen so using this method requires having two screens attached the capacitor you see here on the right, attached on top of the video processor, is taking the video from the video processor and simply output from the phono plug at the back. This works well, as can be seen on this very weak signal. The weak signal is generated as follows. My Solent 23cm transmitter is attached to a dummy load and is running about 800 milliwatts or so, and there is no antenna on the pace box. On the usual SCART output, here we can see a blue screen, but switching to the modified scavenger port we set up, you can see the weak signal. Option 2 is a little more complicated, but obviates the need for the second screen. I used a PIC circuit I found here on this website to generate both horizontal sync pulses and, more importantly, the vertical sync blanking pulses. I take no credit for the circuit or the software, why reinvent the wheel? This solution is cheap and easy if you can get the PIC 10F202 programmed. So what we're doing here is when we are hunting the signal and we have a blue screen we switch on the sync generator like so and inject weak sync into the video processor 
on the same pin that carries in the baseband video from the tuner. This allows us to view the tuner frequency and also any very weak si signal sync will beat with our weak sync pulses and produce slight diagonal patterns in the noise. As it gets stronger you'll start to see the picture properly like this but diagonally distorted due to the two sync signals being out of phase. Once you're at this stage you simply switch off the sync generator. I hope you found this interesting and hopefully you'll have a go at modifying your own analogue satellite receiver.